what, what can you hear from Megan's voice? Oh, uh, it's a, a fountain of knowledge. Mm. Yeah. I was. Mol- I, I haven't been molested yet. I, I'm. I'm pre molestation. I'm no, going to be not, molested when I hit sixty. Not picking it up. Not no, because it hasn't happened yet. But as soon as it does, my voice is going. So if you get molested, say when you're like sixty plus, does your voice get stuck in that? No, kind of no, because you're already area? you're already locked in. Oh, the, I see. The theorem is you stop at the age you get molested. Yes. Yeah. So you. If it's 11, then you stop at 11. Once you see your, you know, 18th birthday or 25th birthday, probably. In the culture war, there are no winners, just podcasters. Only a few are willing to risk their lives in the face of some of the dumbest ideas to have ever captured human civilization. Every week, we, Megan Dom and Sarah Hader, humbly accept this mission to bring you conversations that are equal parts stunning, brave, and internally misogynistic, or even externally. Welcome to a special place in hell. And welcome Adam Carolla, big star, big personality, old friend of mine. Sarah is is only 30 years old and is not sure who you are. I have uh, some idea. I've Googled you. I had to yeah. I had to fill her in. So so part of the reason we want to have you, Adam, is that this podcast is partly premised on the idea that the whole culture has become feminized and that men are turning into women. And this is something that you have been onto for a very long time. You were way ahead of your time. Well, you know, it's, it's interesting in, in life and how it works. And I'll, I'll circle back to that in 10 seconds, but you know, I've been podcasting sort of an independent contractor for 15 years. I've sort of broke out of the system years and years ago and have just been kind of uh, skippering my own pirate ship. And somebody said to me uh, in an interview, maybe a few years ago, they said, oh, you must have seen all of this coming. Like you didn't want to have a corporate sponsor or work for ESPN or Disney or something like that. And I was very quick to say, oh, no, no, no. I didn't see any of this coming 15 years ago. But then I stopped and I went, I don't know, maybe I did see it coming and in 50 years will be chicks the book which also is coming up on 15 years old now you know when you write a comedy book and it, it really was my first comedy book they just go you can title it anything you want and i and i you know so you come up with these stupid jokey comedic you know titles for a comedy book and and at some point in 50 years will be chicks came into my head and I, but I thought about it and I was like, well, it's not even really a comedy title. It's not that funny. Like, I don't even really know that it's that clever. It's, it's not really a turn of phrase. Um, but somehow I, I felt like this is where we were heading. And even though I could have named the book anything, I ended up naming it that. And then I guess we started down that path um in in a more earnest way and in a speedier way so maybe i was on to something okay okay but was at the time was this were you noticing this with like romantic relationships or was it just like the way everybody was acting like when did yeah. men start to become women and and in what way well i grew up in a kind of rough and tumble environment and there was a lot of rough housing and scrapping and fighting and and just general very masculine and 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 then I went from you know sort of high school football to a construction site and into a boxing gym and so I grew up in this very blue collar kind of physical world and then I I left the blue collar world and I started to transition into a more thoughtful white collar creative world and and i started hearing stories and and it would would surprise me like you know i'd be with all the writers at the man show and some guy'd say oh sorry i'm late i went out to the driveway this morning my car totally had a flat tire so i had to wait till the triple a (laughs) came and they took two hours and i'd be like well, why'd you have to wait for AAA? And they'd go, well, what do you want me to do? 
I go, well, just change. You have a spare? And they go, I guess. I mean, I don't know. <laughs> Doing any of that. And they're writing on the man show? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they're writers first and man show writers second, you know. And and I was like, oh, well, I don't get, like, I was confused. Like, just go change your stupid tire. What, what are you talking about? And and they'd be like, I don't, I don't know how to do it. And I'd be like, everyone knows how to do it. You just pull the spare out. And I realized they didn't know how to do it. And I started hearing sort of more and more of those stories like, oh, some guy honked his horn. So I flicked him off and then he got out of his car. So I rolled up the windows. <laughs> and I'd be like, you're telling me this story? I thought you were going to tell me a story about getting out of the car. Getting in the not where I thought this was going. That's not where this was going. And and then I started realizing that oh, uh, most of these guys couldn't drive a manual stick shift and things like that. And I was like, oh, we're kind of we're kind of losing it, you know, in that world. And there's a kind of corporate version of it going on too. Like Gillette is doing commercials showing five year olds wrestling on the lawn at a barbecue and calling it toxic masculinity and and stuff like that. And I'm like, what the? And and then. So I started to see a, a seat change, and and I know, and it it made me feel sort of curious about it, also a little worrisome for the future, and also some a- uh, apathy for the guys who couldn't change their tire or fight. Hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. So Sarah, is this resonating with you at all? I mean, you, you were barely I alive 10 years ago. She hasn't ex- known any other worlds. I, yeah, I, I recently had an experience with um, some guy who needed my help for, for to jump his, his car. They asked you? Well, he just, he just needed my car, right, like uh, uh, for, for the jump. And he didn't know how to do it. And I was like, I don't think you're doing this right. You're like, he, he was like arranging them in like the wrong way. And then my car started smoking. And he was like, oh, 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 no. And then he called his wife and she did it. <laughs> well, I mean, she probably, she, he didn't Google it or she didn't Google it. Or she someplace. was on her way anyway, I think, to like help him. Oh. Uh, but then I came and then he was like, oh, can you just help me? And so I did. All right. Well, just for your listeners, positive and negative on the car that you're jumping and then your car which should have had a positive. I effect. asked him twice. I was like, I don't think that looks right. Are you sure? And See, he was Sarah like, I'm does sure. Everything. Yeah, you can do positive and negative on both cars and it'll sort of work. But they Okay. If, we gotta, the, we, if there's a tip like that, we have to save it for the paying subscribers, maybe. Oh, yeah, Sarah that's... has amazing um, car stories. Didn't you have a story where somebody, you got into a fender bender and then the, the, it was a white guy and because you were a brown person, he was so apologetic, like he had to he was like, do reparations he to, was, just he right was there on the scene. falling all over himself, like apologizing to me and trying to get to know me as a person and like my cultural history and my background and like where my parents are from and uh, all kinds of stuff. And then at the end, he, um, he namasted and then got out of there. Oh, wow. <laughs> She was microaggressed. <laughs> yeah. She's not yeah. But did he yeah. pay? Did his insurance cover the Oh yeah, it uh, covered everything. Collision? I mean, so he was he gave me his card. He was like anything you need, anything at all. I'm so sorry to have like, you know, I was like this is she it, this is very inconvenient right there and yeah, the, well. on the road. Yeah. Yeah, well I mean it's gotten pretty bad, Adam. I mean it is pretty remarkable. I actually so I saw you about a year and a half ago at a party for Douglas Murray. Mm-hmm. And I think you, I don't even know. And I remember it. Cause I said, I said, do you know what the word heterodox means? And you said, no, do you, do you know what it means now? Does this ring a bell? No. It's not a sexual orientation. I know heteronormative, I think. Okay. So you're in the, in the ballpark. So heterodox just refers to like viewpoint diversity. Like instead of being like orthodox to have an orthodoxy, many things you were like, you know, you, you basically take issues on a, you know, you take your positions on an issue by issue basis, but this oh. has become, you know, we, we've been problematized. I've been problematized for a long time. Um, but, you know, one of the things, as you may know, I've always said was that love line was the original, Hetero- heterodoxy or the original idw so the intellectual dark web you know what that is Does he know yeah i mean i've never been there but i've, I've heard you of it. are it 
I so I always say I think thought you uh, and Drew on Loveline were like the original IDW because you were actually just answering people's questions about biological facts and realities and realities of mating and dating and sex. Sarah, you wouldn't even believe this. This I, was so before I don't your time. It. I'm, I'm still not believing it. No, it was so good. It was so good. Now, are there things that like um, you can recall from that time that you could never do today or you don't care? You would still do it. Um, well, I mean, we used to do things like if a, a girl called in, a woman, I should say, called in, but had a, a young girl's voice. I'm not correcting myself for political correctness, but there's differences, you know, between 15 year olds and 25 year olds. And we talk to everybody. Um, but if she had a very girlish sort of high pitch, kind of Marilyn Monroe voice, we knew that she was molested at some point. And that voice is the voice of, I got molested. And then within that voice, there's a difference between being molested at age five or age 13 or age nine. There's there, And you can hear a subtle difference in the tone of their voice and then we would have to try to guess were they molested at a y very young age or at an older age, and you could hear it in the voice. And that was something that people would probably have great umbrage with uh, in today's society. But it's so helpful. It's a good skill. <laughs> it's an interesting skill in that you get a lot more from listening than you do from watching. And if you put the earphones on and you kind of close your eyes and you take thousands of calls per year, then you start hearing qualities in people's voices. And then the quality becomes a pattern at some point and you can kind of hear it, you know, just like you can see it, you know, you can angry people look angry racist mm. people look look racist sweet people look nice you know a dog oh. look there are dogs that look scary dogs that look nice you know you can kind of read it but through hearing it for so long for so such a long period of time you could hear people you could hear what you could hear what they did you know you it's like you could hear if somebody smoked a lot you know that's mm. an obvious one but it but mm -hmm. it goes into a lot more detail and and things that you wouldn't normally think you could hear you you could hear if you did it for a living you can hear people what, what that, can you hear from megan's voice oh uh, it's a a fountain of knowledge mm. yeah. well i was I, I haven't been molested yet I, i'm i'm pre-molestation i'm so gonna be not, molested when i hit 60. not picking it up not, no, because it hasn't happened yet. But as soon as it does, my voice is going to... So if you get molested, say, when you're like 60 plus, does your voice get stuck in that no, kind of no, 60 plus you're already, area? No, no, you're already locked in. Oh, the, I see. The theorem is you stop at the age you get molested. Yes, yeah. So you, if it's 11, then you stop at 11. Once you see your you know, 18th birthday or 25th birthday, probably. probably is pretty oh, I see. So what if Elizabeth Holmes had called in and she had her fake super low voice, you know, from Theranos, the uh, the scammer? Oh, Jesus. I don't know. That's the most amazing thing about her. I mean, hats off because, you know, it, it's a power move. Women are taught to lower the, lower our voices. So we're taken seriously. So she like, oh, really lowered true? her voice. Yeah, that's yeah. why she did that, because yeah. she wanted to succeed in business. Probably listen to Loveline. I bet you Elizabeth yeah. Holmes listened to a lot of Loveline and she got this message and so she lowered her voice uh, yeah. to be taken seriously. Well, that's the, the real white heterosexual male privilege is you don't really get taught anything. People just go do whatever you want. <laughs> Sink or swim. We're not coaching you. Um. Yeah, the other thing was, uh, so when, when you would ask people what they were doing, what they did for a job, and if they started the answer with right now, that was yeah. also a tip off, right? That's a bad sign. Yeah. Yeah. What, what, wait, why is it bad? Script. Hmm? What, what, why is it bad? What does it mean? Because no one ever says, you know, you go, what do you do for a living? Oh, right now, I'm 
the circuit. Right now, I'm hosting a podcast. Yeah, except not in the creator, not the, right right in the creator space. Right now. When you have, when you're the Surgeon General or an attorney, people go, "What do you do for a living?" <laughs> I'm, a, I'm an attorney. <laughs> right now is yeah. means you're not doing something that you want to talk about right now. Yeah, it's true. It's a, That's true. So, well, so the reason our show is called The Special Place in Hell is is from the famous Madeleine Albright quote, there's a special place in hell for women who don't help other women. Uh, so, you know, again, we uh, we have a lot of internalized misogyny and we think that women are kind of, is it fair to say ruining everything, Sarah? Is that too strong? Many things. Many things. Maybe not everything. Yeah. Um, and, you know, we talk a lot about like the mating economy and stuff like that. I mean, what do you think of the fact that all these guys are like living at home? The majority of men, this is actually true. The majority of men under 30 are living with their parents. Well, you know, I think, I mean, I like Madeline Albright, but um, I think part of the problem. <laughs> she called into love lines so many times. It wasn't even funny. I think part of the problem we're having in our society is a kind of a women need to help women and blacks need to help blacks. and. Black Hispanics need to help Hispanics, and then we need more representation so they can kind of help us. It it never seems to work, and I feel like that strategy should be abandoned. Like I feel like you shouldn't feel like I'm in a group, and so this other members of this group are going to do something for me or somehow band together and help me. And I feel the same way, sort of politically as well. Like. Just whoever's the most qualified, let's get them in there. Let's not do a thing where we go, well, we need someone who looks like us, who's the fire chief, so he can represent the community and all that kind of stuff. I've never seen an example of it working. And I just feel like it, people's hopes get built up and nothing ever comes out the other end. So um, I reject the premise of groups helping other groups. Oh yeah. No, so do we. That's why our show is called this. This is a special place in hell where we don't where we don't help other women. Good. Um, um yeah. I you know, look, I, I I this goes way back for me. I mean it's it's kind of an interesting thing, this sort of feminization and is it working or how's it working or how's it manifesting itself. Um curiously people including myself, but others like Dennis Prager and Candace Owens have been kind of bringing this up. Like there's two, we're, we, we've swung too hard toward the feminine, which is to say when I used to do Love Line with Dr. Drew, there was a kind of a idiom or way of thought back then where people just go, you know, this would be a much better place if women ruled the place like if we had women you know there wouldn't be wars if we had women politicians and you know women no you know, if everyone was like margaret thatcher it would be so much better right we wouldn't have this happen and then at some point you know la you know i've i've, I've always said la california especially but la is much more feminine think you know florida is more more masculine thing, Texas, like you can kind of take your cities and go, is this a feminine city or is this a masculine city? And it's not really about gender. This is what people get angry at me when I talk about chicks ruining everything, but they're, but, but it, it's not like, listen, Los Angeles had uh, Eric Garcetti as, as the mayor for uh, quite some time. And we have Gavin Newsom, two dudes, cock and balls, think like chicks, talk like chicks, circle talkers. He was my neighbor. Eric Garcetti lived down the street from me and he had a very He's nice full, house. full blown pussy. And yeah, and well, not, just they, they ran things like when, you know, like he give these speeches, like when these prisoners are paroled, we owe them our gratitude and we need to reach out to them. And what if we had homeless people? Just why can't they live in your guest house? You know, like this very, <laughs> sort of soft nurturing approach to everything, which is good on a sort of micro level because it's it's parenting. You know, the fathers like, get out there, son, you scraped your knee up, but get back on that bike. And then the mom is like, let me put some Bactine on it, sweetie. And there's a kind of a yin and a yang 
to it. But once it starts going past into, you know, full massingale mode, then we are fucked. And that's what essentially what happened. Like LA, COVID, full chip, full blown chip mode for the entire COVID. Just panic. Males and females, this female city council, mm-hmm. LA Unified School Board, bunch of bunch of yentas wanting to shut all everything down, you know, with these retarded scenarios like, well, okay, the kid's gonna be fine, but he comes home and he lives with his grandparents. And I don't know, it's like lives with your grandparents. You think this is Italy in nineteen thirty one? What the <laughs> fuck are you talking about? And it's like and then and then and then and then so what do we get? Shut it all down, everyone get triple vac wear a mask everywhere, complete shut it down mode, which is if you lived in a household, the mom would probably be more concerned with COVID and the dad may be less concerned or the dad would say, look, I get it. You're scared. We don't know what's happening, but we can't shut down schools for a year and a half and we can't shut down our economy. So we're going to have to figure this out and persevere and, and move on. That's yeah. sort of dude thing versus shut it down. If one kid dies, that's one kid too many, and it'll all be worth it. Um, so it is this sort of demise of places like San Francisco and places like LA. And it's just it's 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 not a good way to govern. It's a good way to raise children if you have both opinions expressed, but it's not good for policy. Hmm. Wow. So it's almost like any blue state uh, or blue city is effectively, uh, it, it's not citizenry, but children, mm-hmm. right? So is that sort of the paradigm? So are you, because it sounds like what you're suggesting is that the feminine cities are the liberal ones. So yeah. LA, San Francisco. So yeah, H- it, it, Houston would of- be male. I like mm-hmm. this kind of like, what would be a male city? Like, let's say Louisville, Kentucky, male or female. I oh. honestly don't know. That that one I'd have to dip in. Horses. It has a lot of horses and girls like horses. So I'd I would assume know. a little more male, you know, I don't know, Tampa, Florida or something like that. Galveston, Texas. Oh, you know, yeah. Those, Oil rigs. Portland is chick. Seattle's oh. full chick. You know, all of Canada's turned into full chick with Trudeau totally. with full blown chick. I mean, Trudeau is Gavin Newsom times 10. So they're so, like next level trans almost. Yes. They're like transgender without even being transgender. Right. New York is that way. Chicago's kind of that way. I don't know. You could just, you really could just go and you could just use COVID as a model and go who locked down the hardest and then who got the most punitive. Like who, like Lori Lightfoot was screaming, she's going to have people arrested who walk by the lake. Newsom was taking sand from the beach and bulldozing it into skate parks at the beach. He was cutting down all the volleyball nets on the beach. Like there would have been nothing healthier than being outside, getting some vitamin D and some exercise and playing volleyball at the beach. We arrested a guy who was paddle boarding in the, in the bay. Uh, There was that tape. Remember that? I don't know if she was a councilwoman or who she was out of uh, New Jersey or whatever. She was explaining how to play tennis that, uh, you know, we couldn't play doubles and you had to kick the balls. Everyone started laughing. You couldn't reach down and pick, pick up the balls. This is insane. And, and, and we had Barbara Ferrer, who's a full blown kooky gypsy bitch. And she ran Los Angeles. So now we all have to live under the crazy woman's thumb. And that's not a way to govern. Why haven't you moved yet? Uh, my kids are graduating high school soon. And mm-hmm. I will be attending their graduation in a U-Haul. <laughs> Where are you going? You know, let me tell you I, a sad testimonial as it pertains to L.A. and California. I've lived here my whole life. And California was a destination and you aspired to get to California, to get to Los Angeles, you know. And if anybody ever moved out of California back in the day, it was like, oh, my dad's in the military and they transferred him to 
Camp Lejeune or something, you know, we got to move, you know, like there was that. There was a job version of the company headquarters relocated and we got to move with that. And then once in a while, there's like an aspirational one, like, well, we move, we're moving to Maui. Like we saved up a bunch of money and we're tired of the rat race. When you say to people now who are talking about leaving California, where are you going? They go, wherever. I, I don't know. There's 10 places. I'm not sure. The, the point is, is you used to go somewhere to leave California for something. Now the general consensus is I'm just fucking leaving. I'm yeah. getting out of California. That's, that's the scary part. Mm -hmm. All right, Sarah, did our, some of our uh, listeners had some, some questions for Adam. Do we remember what they are? Oh, actually, but I, I just, before I forget, I mean, I want to make sure I want to, I want to drill down on like your dating and mating advice because, you know, you know, you're like a long, long time sage with this stuff. So, and I don't know if you're taking questions. I know you still do the podcast with, with Dr. Drew, but are you guys actually taking callers ever? Sometimes. Or how does that go? Sometimes. Sometimes. So if somebody calls in and says like, you know, how can I get into a relationship or like, should I get married? Okay. Actually, here's a question because, you know, there's this whole kind of relitigation of the sexual revolution that's happening now. This is something we talk a lot about around here. And, you know, back in the nineties, I think it was like very uncool to settle down before you were like, say 30 or in your early thirties. Um, and now people are starting to say that was misguided, that you're going to be better off if you like find a partner earlier, it's only going to get harder. It's better to have kids earlier rather than later. What do you say to that? I mean, I think you should get to a certain kind of a threshold age because you just don't know what you're doing when you're like 22 or 23. But that could be good because then you are clueless with somebody else and then you grow together but yeah that, it, in, in it and there's also what are you doing with your life like some people are sort of well on their way when they're 24 25 or some person might be a career military person or something is going this is where i'm going to be some people may be in the fire department and you know they're they got to do 25 years and then they can retire or whatever it is so you know, I don't know there's an ideal age. When I was in my early 20s, I was in no position to get married or start a family because I was working in a field that I didn't really want to be in, which was carpentry. And I had aspirations to make it into another field, which is entertainment. And I wasn't there. And and I knew it was going to take a while to get there. And I knew it was going to like cost money and take time. And so, you know, part of it is sort of what station are you at in, in your life? Um, in general, also, I feel like the clock has moved or the calendars moved back a lot. Like I, people dating, you know, the, the, the richest guy in the world, Jeff Bezos, is 59 and his fiance Lauren Sanchez is in her 50s. You know that that's probably something that wouldn't have happened years ago. The rich he would have been dating world. a 25 year old. What do you mean? Yeah. Oh, yeah, you I, still see a lot of that. Um, yeah, no, oh, I do still see that. I feel like with him, oh, yeah. it's like there's something special that woman is doing. Like there's something oh, there's, she knows. You know, like I'm sure some yeah. secret delight. I'm I'm saying you still see a lot of it. But there's a first off, there's a lot of women now who are in their 50s and dating guys that are younger than them. Like it, it just the clock has been kind of spun around now. It's it's not the same as it. As I feel it like that's a sham, though. Those women dating much younger guys. I feel like that's just like a novelty thing. And how seriously are they taking that? Well, you added the word much. I just said younger. I, I'm not. Yeah. You're, if you're okay. share and you're dating uh bagel boy, you know, that that's a, a timely reference, but I, that's different. I'm talking about, I'm talking about a 53 year old woman dating a 48 year old guy. Which oh, okay. Can, okay. You, okay. That, that you didn't see younger. You didn't see that that often either. Um, I mean, I'm just saying we're in a kind of an era like hairstyles. There is no one. 
hairstyle anymore. You just kind of do what you want. And there's not one fashion and there's not really one anything. And we used to sort of, people dress, you know, men all dress the same and wore hats and did stuff like that. Or um, if you work for NASA, you had horn rim glasses, you know, like there was oh, a, there was a, yeah, fashion. Or a space suit. Yeah. And, and now it's just kind of people can do whatever they want or be gay and be married or not be married. Like I, I just, I, I don't feel like there's a, a, a set standard anymore. But do you feel like women have been lied to about their fertility? Because we're hearing a lot about that. Like, oh my God, see, Sarah is what, I don't know, 30. And you say that you grew up and nobody ever said that you had a biological clock because that would have been somehow unfeminist or disempowering of women. It's just not something anybody brought up, you know, That's um, weird. except for, except if uh, on like right wing, very like manosphere, like manosphere. Kind of places online. But then that was an easy thing to dismiss. That's so weird. Well, I we're in a kind of era where we're not really we're scared to ascribe any sort of biological mandates to anybody that has to do with their gender, because that's somehow not being inclusive. And that's insane. There's, there's differences and they should be discussed and honored oftentimes. And if you're a woman, you know, the window starts to close at 36, 37, and it gets statistically a lot harder after that age to bear children. Uh, and there's, you know, technology and sciences, you know, can rectify some of that. But to not just be honest about that is like saying, oh, well, it's a hate crime to tell guys after the age of 50 to get a prostate exam. It's like, <laughs> no, it's not. You're, you're urged to do it. Well, why should you have to do it? You know, it's like, well, it's a biology. And when you hit 50 as a male, you should get a prostate. Exam. What if you identify as male? Should, can you get a prostate exam if you were assigned female at birth, but you identify as male? Yes. And I probably should have said colonoscopy because the prostate exam may start earlier. But the, the point is, is there are certain biological differences that nobody wants to discuss. There are certain differences that certain mile markers that we hit as as we're different biologically. And and they should be honored and discussed. Mm, yeah, we do that here. That's why we don't have any sponsors because we talk about <laughs> gender stuff and trans stuff. I think we got uh, like in trouble on YouTube already for something like that. Yeah, yeah. I don't. I don't think they like COVID talk. Well, maybe they don't care about COVID talk anymore. They used to care a lot about. It. We got in. Now it's okay. Yeah, now it's okay to talk about COVID. Yeah, stuff. we can like they, lab. In New York Times, they were you know they're they're openly publishing a lot of things. Oh, yeah. Just recently, there was a big, you know, um, New York Times like op, uh, like editorial. Editorial. Uh, yeah, yeah. On um, well, the lockdown. Turns out the lockdowns yeah. are really really bad on on learning. <laughs> uh, go yeah. Here. Yeah. Yeah. The, the, I'm still waiting for an apology for everybody. But um yeah, they just forget about whatever they were wrong about last time and move on to whatever they're gonna be wrong about this time. So that's right. kind of the process. Yeah, it gets memory hold big time. So Sarah, do you have any questions for Adam before we, we let him go in a in a few minutes here? Like Yeah, lots of people had questions. There was um one guy, I mean, this is I'm I'm using this question because I, I this is the question I had. He says, uh, is comedy dead? It seems to me that amongst the chattering classes, comedy is no longer taken seriously. Comedy must conform to a predominant woke sentiment. I mean, yeah, I mean, you know what he's going to say about it. But I, I mean, you know, I feel like a lot of um, it, it's not just comedy. Um, I look at new shows, you know, on Netflix, whatever, like the new stuff that comes out. So often it's really predictable. It feels like the writing sucks now and I know where they're going to go with it, especially if I see like a character, like I see a little Latina, like I know exactly She'll what have her no little flaws. arc is going to be. Well, I, I you know, I, you, you kind of know what her struggles already are. You almost don't even see her develop as a person um, or even be a person beyond like the specific trope. Um, it's just becoming very, you know, uh, very stale and I don't really watch shows much. I mean, like I don't really consume media uh, yeah. because it's all it, 
the writing sucks. I mean, do you think this just... is going to change, Adam? I mean, I have to say, if you go to the comedy clubs and they take your phone or that you put your phone away, then the stuff is often funny. I mean, that's where it's happening, but it will never, that same comic will go on, you know, Colbert the next day and have nothing to say. So mm. do you think this mm -hmm. is going to pass, Adam, this era that we're in? Um, I think it'll create something different. You know, there'll be people who go the opposite way of political correctness, um, which I'm already seeing some of that happening. So you're always going to get something is going to come out in a, in a different way. So you're going to get more of the uh, politically incorrect com comedy because you tried to sort of, you know, tamp it down. And comedians traditionally buck the system. But I do notice and and so what you're going to have is established people by and large people that have jobs who have been in the business for a while who do comedy they will watch their p's and q's and and follow along the same way you know who in the entertainment industry took an oppositional stance against covid and all the regulations in COVID. What big name? You know, what a- Nobody, because they have too much to lose. Right, right. I think the only people speaking out are the people who like aren't making any money in, to begin with. Right. Uh, aren't making any money and or good as well, which is to say, I had an interesting conversation. Like, who are the people that are saying, I'm not going along with this? And if you work, you know, how many people are exceptional and, and excellent and sort of so good that they essentially can't be canceled? Yeah, like you know? the fuck and, you money people or just yeah. the fuck you life people. Yeah. Yeah. Or it's it's richer than fuck you money. It's fuck me money. I'll, I'll buy Twitter for $20 billion more than it's worth just so I can fuck with this guy and do what I want with it. You know, so there are, there's an Elon Musk, you know, there's a Dave Chappelle. You know, there are these people. So you and, and once in a while they break away. Like, you know, the New York Times has 500 employees. All of them are average. Three of them are exceptional. Exceptional people don't go along with lying and bullshit. They go, fuck this. I'll go to Substack and I'll do my own thing because they're good. But most people aren't good. Most people are happy to have the job that they have. And they're somewhere in the middle. And so when everyone is kind of living somewhere in the middle, then you have to go along with the bullshit because you're scared you're going to get canceled. Now, you can't cancel Dave Chappelle. He's good. You know, and you can't cancel Elon Musk. And there's or Tucker Carlson. You know, there's a handful of names of people that just go, well, those rules are for you average people who are happy to have a job and a paycheck. But I'm excellent. So I get to do what the fuck I want. And some of them have broken away. Now, once in a while, an average person thinks they're excellent and gets swatted down. And then once in a while, an excellent person thinks they're average and stays in and, and, and keeps the status quo alive. But yeah, that's frustrating. What, what you're hearing, you're hearing the younger people who aren't hanging on to a job, uh, comedians, you're hearing them do who they're going, I am not established, so I'm going to establish myself as this comedian. Right. You know, a couple of our listeners, uh, more than a couple actually, asked about uh David Allen Greer um and what happened there. I mean, it was incredible highlight when he come on your show. One of my favorite oh. bits ever is his routine about the uh take take the names of birth control and they became the uh names of african-american children um and then he just like Thank stopped you. going on that's my bit by the way i just knew he would knock it out you well, stole it well he ran no, i didn't it. steal it and i come i came up with it it was perfect okay all right so we stand corrected there but it was so magical when he came on it was and excellent. what's your i mean i don't want you to like you know talk behind people's back but do you have a an analysis there of did he do some kind of like, you know, calculus and decide that it wasn't worth it to 
keep sticking I, his neck out? I think he got Trump derangement syndrome. Mm. And he, uh, Dave and I go way back. Dave and I have always been, you know, friends on, on and off the, you know, show. And I've been, I would say, generous to him. I've tried to get him parts and sitcoms that I've been on and, and roles. And I've always been on a very, very good terms with him. And we've done a lot of socializing as well as is sort of working together. And I've always enjoyed his comedy and his ability. And I, and a lot of the bits that people love were sort of, <clears throat> some of it was, you know, me going, oh, David would be really funny doing this bit. And I would tee it up for him. Um, David's also a weird guy and a little bit crazy, but sort of in a way that if you're not married to him, it's, you know, fun time kind of, kind of guy. And like, you know, Jimmy would throw a Christmas party and I'd say to Jimmy, can we invite David? And and he'd go like, yeah, okay. And then I'd call David and go, come on, come to the Christmas party at Jimmy's house. Um, I he When Trump got in office, a lot of people went nuts. And their position wasn't you couldn't be agnostic on Trump. You needed to take a stand against Trump. Uh, my feeling was I, I was never a huge Trump supporter but first off, you think Hillary Clinton or Joe Biden is good at their job? Like, as opposed to whom is what I'm saying. You know what I mean? Like, like we got to get rid of Trump. Or we got rid of Trump. We got Joe Biden. Fucking sucks. Okay? So who is the alternative? And Hillary's a piece of shit, too. So it's like, all right, I'm not so sure the other person is going to do a bang-up job with this country. But he had Trump derangement syndrome, I assume. And then he went on um, Howard Stern's show and then Stern asked him, do you have, who are your friends? Like, who are your Hollywood friends? And he, because we are friends, it sort of leapt to his mind where he went, well, Adam Carolla is a friend of mine, but now I he's gone nuts because he basically called me like a white nationalist or racist or something something insulting and insane. Um, because these people have no fucking governor or boundaries or anything. It's like, oh, dare to disagree with them on something, and now you're what? In the Klan? Suck my dick. Like, uh, who the fuck gave you that power? And no, I'm not a misogynist just because I don't like Hillary Clinton. I don't like Hillary Clinton because I think she's bad at what she does, and I think she's a fucking liar. And I don't, and I, by the way, I don't want to have a beer with whoever's president. I just, I'm looking for some policy. That's all. What's your border policy? How much is gas? Shit like that. I'm fine with it. I don't need to like you. I don't need to respect you. I don't need anything. I just want some good policy. But he basically just called me a, a racist, you know, sort of white nationalist or, or some version of that. And and that that was that. And it happens all the time in Hollywood. You have to agree with everything these idiots are saying. Otherwise, you are you're not it's not just that you disagree with them you're white supremacist you're white nationalist you're misogynist you're racist you're you're whatever based on nothing and no information no incidents no anything you're just that and i reject that wholly and and people will go like well why don't you patch things up with David Allen Greer? It's like he went on a fucking radio show and insulted me. Fuck off. I don't need to be friends. And by the way, I don't need to be friends with people who don't like me for no reason. It's so weird. I feel like there are so many comedians that I, I'm constantly asking myself, do they really think this? Or like, are there back channel conversations going on between like Sarah Silverman? Although she she kind of like steps up to the line and then walks back, you know, or, or like Amy Schumer. I can think of any number of people and I know that they're holding their tongues like I can just feel it. And yeah. I mean, well, I, I again, it's it's a lot of grandiosity. I mean, all these people are narcissists, you know, to think. I know what this person's thinking, or I know how they should think, or I'm going to tell them how to think. First off, I would never say to one of these people, here's how you need to vote. Here's what you need to think. Here's how you need to handle COVID. I never said to anyone anything. I just said, look, I don't think masks work. So when I take a hike, I'm not going to wear a fucking mask. If you want to wear a mask, then wear a mask. That, 
That's all. That's the extent of our exchange. I didn't rip the mask off your head when you pass me on the horse trail. I just want go ahead and do what you want. And people get into this thing all the time where it's like, well, it's one side and the other side. He said and she said, bullshit. One side, which is my side, is saying, leave me the fuck alone. That's all. I just want to be left alone. I want to do what I want to do. I want to say what I want to say. And I'll handle COVID the way I want to handle COVID. You're the ones who are locking me out of my job. Don't want me to go into restaurants. Want to coach me up every time you pass me on the street. That's you. I want nothing. So don't do, I want this and you want that. I want this. My this is nothing. <laughs> yeah, I think we're the same. Sarah, your this is nothing. It's going to be my new motto for you. Nothing is the new this. Yeah. Um, okay, do we have any final, do you have a final question for Adam? Do you have a better sense of who he is now? I do. I mean, you were really like in the dark. This was very sad. I was very not sad. that much. You, you got to go back I knew, and listen I knew, to I knew. Love I, Line. I, I know. She wasn't. But I, you know. Love Line was like, what? When, when you, did it? You were barely born. I don't even think you were born. It was when, the 90s did, what, most. It was the 90s, it, right? Well, I didn't know about long. Love Line. It went on I knew about the man time. show. It, it, yeah. Oh, okay. I, yeah. I'm a, I'm a, I go back to the love line element. All right. Is there anything? So should we ask him for like advice for our show? How yeah. Like succeed? how do we make money? Cause we're, yeah. How do we make money? We because this that's is like, so, this is hard. We just, I, I don't know about you, but I have never hustled harder in my entire 30 years of career. It's unbelievable. I'm not talking to Sarah. I'm talking to Adam. <laughs> Sarah's never hustled. I've never hustled less. She's I've had 30 never, years well, of life. Look, hey. Yeah. Well, um, you know, I I think if you if you have listeners and followers, then the money, even though they sort of claim that you know corporate this and corporate that, they'll 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 support anybody who has a base. You know, they'll go wherever the eyeballs are, wherever the ears are. So obviously building that is important and and the way to build that is consistency and quality but there is a lot of competition these days and i'm mm. saying i'm with you megan in that i realized this about 15 years ago when i lost my radio job i just said there's a new world order it's no longer one job it's a bunch of hoses going into the same trough and some of the hoses will be moving some water and some will just be dripping. And we need to figure out how the hoses that are just trickling, we need to see if we can speed it up a little bit. And then some of the hoses are going to be sucking water out of the trough <laughs> and, and, and pushing it out in the street. Those are my kids. So I'm like... <laughs> It, the new world order is not one contract and one gig and sort of, you know, I work for the postal department for 41 years. It's like a thousand different hoses, which one's on, which one's off, which one's trickling, which one's gushing, which one's sucking water out. And that's just the metaphor. Oh my God. Mind blown. It's all about, it's all about hoses. Yeah. Where's, not your, having where's your hose? We, I know that's uh all right. I we get some hoses sucking backwards. Yeah. This is and and some yeah. <laughs> okay, I really got to pro. I got to process this. All right, Adam, is there anything you want to tell us? Do you have anything to promote? Promote for our five, the five people <laughs> right, who are listening. Right, right. <laughs> well, but it's going to put you over the top right now. If you want to help my hose flow, you can go to adamcorolla.com. I do live shows, dates all over the country, and you can. Listen to the podcast for free if you like. Yeah. You, you're you doing a lot of podcasts. How many do you have? Uh, I do four a week now, and then I do Dr. Drew three a week. Mm. How do you have time for anything else? It doesn't take up that much time. Mm. He doesn't prepare. You know uh -oh. what? Uh, he's you really don't do good hair and makeup. This either. is where we have to get because Sarah always wants to have long prep calls and prepare for what we're going to say. And oh, that's, I, I that's a whole sucking backwards. Just not a lot. <laughs> <laughs> all right see this is something to aspire to all right adam thank you so much for for joining us on the pod it's a pleasure and a privilege and um we'll see you out there in heterodox land 
My pleasure. Thank you, guys. Okay. Bye. All right. Bye-bye. 